All right, thank you, Ross. Uh, okay, well, we're excited to uh, be back in the game uh, this week. Enjoyed the, the open date and getting a chance to, to watch a, a lot of other people play and, and uh, kind of learn a little bit about some other teams and, and learn from other teams as well. So uh, enjoyed that, but you know, uh, nothing, like, nothing like being a part of it every week and, and just knowing that you got uh, a game to look forward to and, and, and the preparation that, that takes place all week long. Uh, to me, that's what it's all about. Uh, our guys uh, are in a good place. You know, we've got good momentum. Obviously, we've had a good start. Uh, but now we're, we're turning the page and, and stepping into October here. Uh, another, another opportunity here at home. Uh, Going to be a night game in the Valley. And uh, I know it'll be a, 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 a great atmosphere you know, for our guys. So we're excited about that uh, you know, this weekend. Uh, got a really good Virginia team. Uh, Bronco has done an amazing job. Obviously, this is a rematch of the ACC championship game last year. And uh, they were there for a reason. Uh, this is a team that you know, in a, in, a, in a culture and a program that's been building uh, each year. Uh, they're probably one of the more experienced teams out there. Uh, got a lot of guys back uh, offensively. You know, uh, aren't, we, had, we saw Armstrong some last year, but not, not a ton. Uh, so getting a chance to, to see him uh, this past Saturday was, was really good, uh, other than He's a he's a he's a he's a challenge. He's a problem. He's a really good player. Uh, looks like a you know a young Steve Young running around out there. Lefty, crafty, creative, extends plays. Tough runner. Uh, really good size. Uh, accurate thrower. Uh, really has no fear. Puts the ball up. Trusts his guys to make competitive plays for him. They do a great job from a from a uh, schematic standpoint. Um, experienced in the offensive line. You know, know what they're doing there, uh, but formationally, you know, alignment, uh, check with me's, RPOs, their efficiency on first and second down. You know, they do a great job with all that stuff. We got a few transfers in there. Uh, you know, 21 is he's he's a big boy pad runner. You, you, you better you better be ready for that guy. Uh, um, big they got length at tight end. They got a couple long guys at receiver. Uh, got a heck of a little slot uh, with Kemp, a uh, little number four there. He's a, he's a really good football player. But just they just do a great job. And, and you can just go back to our game last year. I thought they did it. We only, had, we only sacked them one time. Uh, they were incredibly efficient against us on first and second down. That's an area we're going to have to do better. Uh, they were 10 of 18 on third down. So we had a hard time getting off the field. Um, and uh, again, they did a lot of good things. Uh, we did not uh, you know, get the type of pressure that we wanted. We, we uh, uh, didn't do a good job in short yardage against them. So, you know, we, we've got a lot of improving to do uh, from, from that game and, and, and from less than a year ago. Uh, so we're excited about the challenge. But again, uh, just one game in, you know, they, they, they look like the team that, that went to the ACC championship game last year. Uh, so uh, defensively, big, stout, uh, you know, do some – do some creative things defensively as well. Both sides very creative in, in, in their schemes and how they play, and uh, you know mixing up uh, their their zone coverages with picking their spots with their man uh, uh, techniques. Uh, but they're you know experienced. Same thing. A bunch of guys back up front. I think they got eight starters back. A lot of guys in the secondary played a lot of football for them. So uh, know what they're doing. Uh, know what to put their eyes on. And uh, it's a team that you gotta. You know, you gotta you gotta execute at a high level uh, again. So, you know, excited about the opportunity again. Uh, just getting back home, getting back in the in the flow of things, and and uh, just trying to trying to get to one and zero this week. Our team's in a good place, health wise. Uh, we pretty much have, you know, everybody that that we expected to be back uh, is practicing, uh, and uh, you know, we've got a couple of longer term guys like Rook, uh, Luke Price. Uh, that uh, you know are, are out uh, for a little, little more extended time. Justin Foster, uh, but the rest of those guys are, are, are here. So this is really the first time in quite a while that we've had um, uh, everybody on the practice field. So hopefully uh, we can continue to you know do what we need to do and uh, you know uh, have good test results. You know uh, Wednesday and Friday and not have any setbacks there and uh, have a great week of practice. Uh, but uh, again, appreciate our fans. 
and uh, look forward to seeing everyone in the Valley Saturday night that uh, can come. Any questions? Matt Wilson, Matt Wilson asked a question. As a reminder, if you don't mind, please turn on your video available and identify yourself and tell us that you're out there when asking a question. Yeah, well, it's Mike Barber from the Richmond Times Dispatch up in Virginia. I wanted to ask you what you see in, in their edge rushers, uh, Snowden and, and Taylor, and uh, what challenge it is when there's an effective guy on, on either side for the defense. Well, they're you know they're an Oki front, so so they seem to always have an edge guy. Uh, they like to box everything. Uh, they get their hands on balls. They got us a couple times last year, but they're just long. I mean, they're long uh, and 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 improving. You know, you can see they're a little. They look a little thicker uh, than they were last year, uh, but they do. You know, they do a lot. They're moving seven all over the place. Uh, but uh, Levin is a, you know, he's a six, seven guy that, that gets his hands on balls and, uh, you know, does a really good job of, of, of creating pressure. They do a nice job with their uh, blitz packages and how they attack your, attack your protections, attack your back. They got us, they, they got us like I said, uh, uh, a couple times last year, did a good job with their twist game. But uh, the length is, is a problem uh, on the edge, uh, the way they box everything. So. We've got to do a great job of uh, uh, identifying, being on the same page, and uh, being aware of where those guys are. Two good players. Dabo, this is Matt with the state. You, do you know long term or, or I guess uh, time frame what when Justin Foster might be back? No, I don't. Just whenever they tell me he 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 can go, that's that's when that's when he'll be able to go. Yeah, I, honestly, I do not. Uh, you know, I think I think we were we were already locked in on some other guys, but but uh, uh, he's he's a long, long guy and uh, made some big plays, big plays against Duke. In fact, he was he was I think the difference in the game uh, for Duke. Uh, I mean, in, in the Duke, uh, Duke game, you know, had a had a kind of a circus catch down the sideline off a tip ball, and then uh, had a great play. Uh, uh, in the end zone, uh, you know, a competitive play. So, you know, this quarterback is savvy. He's tough. He, he's not afraid to run it. He creates. Uh, he can escape. And, and he's not afraid to put the ball up to those guys and give them a chance to, to make a competitive play. And that's where we're going to have to, you know, do a great job. You know, uh, they had a lot of 50-50 balls in the game, but, but uh, 81 did a, did a heck of a job for him. So a uh, good start for him uh, as a freshman. Uh, you know, in his first game, he's just going to get better. You know, as he gets stronger and develops, he, he, he'll be a problem as he matures. Uh, Dabo, uh, Billy Napier, uh, obviously a former assistant of yours, has had a lot of uh, success at Louisiana. Just wanted to know if you could reflect on what it was like to work with him at Clemson and then what it's been like <clears throat> to see his success as a head coach. Oh, I love Billy. Love working with him. Uh, incredibly uh, bright coach, uh, you know, always has been, and, and uh, did a did a great job, uh, you know, uh, for me and and for Clemson when he was here in, in many many areas. Uh, but uh, you know, it was a uh, opportunity for him uh, when he moved on, and uh, you know, we, we had a, a change here, and just kind of the the right time to do that. But I'd worked with Billy for a long time. He went, since he was a GA, you know, he came here as a GA. And, then he became a full-time coach, and you know we worked side by side. Uh, I was coaching receivers; he was coaching tight ends, and and then when you know just as much the respect that I had for Billy when I became the interim, you know I moved him to quarterbacks and shuffled things around, and and then kept him as the coordinator, and and uh, he did a great job. Uh, but uh, you know uh, after that second season, it was just a you know kind of schematically wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction, and. And it just really needed the spot. Billy, uh, Billy did an amazing job, and we've we've always stayed in touch and uh, friends to this day. I've reached out to him a couple times, and super proud of him, uh, and not surprised at all uh, to see him, uh, you know, having the success that he's had because he's a he's a he works hard at it. He's incredibly knowledgeable and and uh, you know just a good person. Appreciate it. Yeah, 
is Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Kind of a dumb question, but how important are explosive plays and today and, and relative to when you became a head coach? Maybe call it chunk plays back then, but where are they on your board every week You know, for accomplishments? Well, it's a part of our plan to win. Uh, explosive plays can come in, can, can come in all, you know, comes on defense, comes offense, comes special teams. But, but um, you know, for us, it, as far as measurables, it's a, it's a run of, of 12 plus, it's a, it's a pass of 16 plus, or it's a touchdown. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about offensive football, and it's just a part of our, again, plan to win. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we always have an attack mindset. We're always looking for those explosives and, and uh, you know, but you don't want to force things. Uh, but, but the, you know, there's a, there's a statistic. If you have at least two more big plays, two more explosives, than the opponent, and and you win the turnover margin, you win 98% of the time. So it's always a part of our plan to win, and uh, you know, trying to uh, pick our spots and make sure that we can, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes they just kind of happen uh, when you don't expect it, and sometimes you you create those explosives. Uh, but that is a huge part of uh, I think the success of anybody uh, offensively. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dabo, Josh from the Post and Courier. Uh, just a question about the cornerbacks. How excited are you to have Mario back this weekend? And has DK worked through uh, some of those disciplinary things that you needed him to work through? Uh, Mario is, is it's great to have him back. It's good to see him back out there, you know, healthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, excited about that. Having that extra week is going to help him. And as far as DK, you know, I, I didn't I haven't announced anything as far as disciplinary stuff for, for DK, so not sure where that's coming from. Uh, I've given him some love. I, I don't know about discipline, but I've given him a little love. Uh, but he's uh, you know, DK's great. Abo, this is uh, Larry Williams with Virginia's offensive line. Um, how hard is it with their stature and size sort of to get off blocks and, and, and to disrupt just just given how big they are? Yeah, they're big, big and experienced. I think that's the other key thing. They're, they're big, strong, and experienced. They really do a good job of being on the same page. So uh, we're going to find out, you know, Saturday night. I mean, it's a, that's, a, that's a key matchup, you know. I, I think we're much improved in the defensive line, uh, and, and hopefully that will show. Uh, like I said, we did not. We only had one sack on them last year, and uh, you know didn't have many PBUs either. Uh, and again, they they were ten of eighteen on third down, and I thought they dominated us in short yardage. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play better up front. Yeah, well, this is Pete at AP. Um, was this? I know this is a different world we're living in. Was this was Sunday for you a little bit nerve wracking at all, waiting for these guys to go through the tests because they had the two days off? And is this just part of what you know we're all going to have to go through now? Uh, it's just yeah, it's just our norm now. I mean, it you know it, it's not just Sunday; it's it's Wednesday, it's Friday. So, and it's not really that day; it's the next day or that night. You know, because typically I find out either depending on when the test is, I find out either that night or the next morning. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, when you see that Danny Poole text message come across, you take a deep breath uh, before you open it up. So, uh, but I'm proud of our guys. Our guys are really locked in and doing a great job um, of, of doing what they need to do to uh, stay, stay as healthy as they possibly can. Oh, he's he's getting a baptism uh, by fire. You know, he's learning that you know it's a it's a lot different uh, on this side of things. So, his uh, he don't have near as much free time as he used to have. His 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 clock's a little different, but he's he's doing great. He's here every day. Uh, you know, when we get here and when we go home, and and uh, so I'm really proud of him. It's something that he's you know CJ's one of those guys. If he sets his mind to do something, he's gonna 
he's not going to just do it. He's going to be great at it. And, uh, you know, he's, he's decided he wants to coach. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll equip himself. And because and, uh, just, there's just, you know, you know, you may know a lot of ball. There's just so much more about, you know, uh, coaching uh, than just drawing up a play or, or uh, knowing a position. There's so much more than that, uh, especially in college football, when you when you also have the uh, recruiting and compliance and all the other administrative stuff that, that comes with it. Um, so he'll be great, but he's he's doing good. It, it's been been awesome having him uh, having him here every day. Hey Dabo, this is Grace with the Athletic. Um, when you said last night on the radio show that you're not for the social justice messages on the uniform. Why is that something that you don't support? No, I just, it's not that I'm not for the messages. I just, I just think that, you know, I'm a very traditional guy. You know, I came from Alabama, uh, uh, really the same reason that, that we don't change our uniforms. It's not anything to do, uh, not for the messages or, or whatever. It's just, um, you know, I've always just not messed with uniforms. That's just kind of been my, my deal. But, that's that was all changed this year. So uh, guys have have the opportunity to express themselves in in a, in a way um, uh, that in, in for things that they believe in and causes and so forth. And and uh, so certainly support that. Uh, I was more talking about you know just the just the uniform type stuff. Uh, and that's been it's been our our policy here ever since I got the job. You know as far as how we how we how we do our uniforms and. Uh, and that's just a product of, you know, 13 years at Alabama. And, uh, you know, uniforms were never uh, – I, I remember when they put the Nike logo on the uniform at Alabama, you would have thought that, I mean, the world was coming to an end. Uh, so that's just kind of been my mindset for a long time. But, you know, again, uh, that's a uh, something that was made available this year, and I certainly support our guys uh, in that effort. Uh, that's really all I was talking about. So you are – okay and support the Black Lives Matter stickers and the, I know that Trevor and Darian had said that, you know, we'll see some stuff as the season goes on, but that is something you're on board with? I'm on board with with uh, a lot of the messages. I'm not on board with political organizations, all right? That's that's a different, that's a different question. Uh, I, I, I'm apolitical, you know? Uh, this is, it's not, to me, that's divisive. I've, I've I voted Democrat. I have voted Republican. I voted Independent. I've I've written in people uh, just because I didn't like anybody that was running, so I just wrote in somebody that I liked. I've done. I've been voting since I was 18, so um, I'm very apolitical when it comes to organizations. Uh, so I don't really support any organizations. I support uh, common sense uh, causes. That's for sure. Davo, sorry, this is David Hale with ESPN. I. I I don't want to um, assume anything here, so I wanted to clarify. Are you, do you what, what does Black Lives Matter mean to you? I guess, and is that what you're suggesting is a political organization? Or I know this becomes very complicated, and, and there's some gray areas, and a lot of people have different ideas. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear about what it is that you're you're getting at here. Yeah, I would refer back to what I said this summer. Uh, black lives more than matter. Uh, black lives are worthy. Uh, they equally matter, and uh, it's no different. Politicizing the message is the thing that you would have a concern about. I'm just not. I just don't support political organizations. It's just simple as that. You, it, from any facet or form, uh, uh, absolutely, Black Lives Matter. I mean, that's 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 common sense. Uh, I've I've lived my whole life uh, making sure that that that's uh, something that hopefully my actions have have uh, shown. Uh, not something that I've just said. Anybody, anybody have anything else for Coach? Hey, Coach, it's it's David Hood with Tiger Net. Uh, you know, we, we've kind of hit some milestones so far this season, actually playing a game, then the first home game. Now we get another one this weekend with the first night game in Death Valley. You've often talked about how night games in Death Valley – a little bit of an extra juice. How forward are you looking 
even as a coach, to coming off the bus, seeing the lights on, even though limited fans, to, to just a night game uh, in Clemson. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, sounds like we're going to probably have a few of those night games uh, along the way. But I'm just excited to have any game, uh, regardless of what time they could tell us we play at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'd be, I'd be just as excited. But uh, you know, it, it'll be cool. It'll be nice. Uh, be a great atmosphere, prime time. You know, all those type of things. Those are uh, there'll be there'll be whatever juice our fans can bring. I know it'll be uh, in the stands. That's for sure, and a lot of excitement. So you know, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to look forward to it and. Um, you know, we had had one night game already up at uh, at Wake, uh, but you know there wasn't anybody there, uh, so this will be a, a little different atmosphere for us. And in in this climate, in this world that we're operating in, probably be as good as it as you can expect. So uh, that'll be fun for our guys. I have to ask. It, it looked like when you ran down the hill against the Citadel. There was no band there, no no flags waiting on you, and it, to me, it looked like you and the highway patrolman were racing to the fifty yard line. Yeah. What was that like? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I gotta. I gotta. I, that's a. That's called being a creature of habit, and uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to coach myself up better. I just came down the hill and kind of, you know, like I normally do. You run through the band and you go down there and you take a left. Uh, typically, I turn around and kind of high five the guys as they're running through the band and. So I get down there and then all of a sudden I turn around and I'm like by myself, there's nobody there. And the team, like most normal people would just, they just go right on over to the shortest path to the sideline. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get down the hill, but I'll probably, I'll probably go a little bit more toward the sideline because uh, it really doesn't make sense to go all the way to the 50 and then go left. At least, at least our guys, uh, they, they don't think that makes sense with, with nothing to run through. So uh, that's what we'll do and uh, it'll be fun. attention to the NFL fan bases every Sunday that are already fighting over Trevor and, and who's going to get him? No. No. Do you think that that's something that he's at least cognizant of? He's, he's basically trending every Sunday on Twitter. No. I mean, I don't think he's worried about that at all. Uh, I think he's just worried about getting ready for Virginia and uh, trying to play well against Virginia. 